What's going on everyone? The all-wheel drive conversion project on the Wired Freedom is complete. It's fine-tuned, it's dialed in, it's performing to my expectations. So today I thought I would give you a little bit more information on this project, what parts I used, how it's built, how it's wired, how it functions, and then I also have one very important question to ask of you. But first, let me give you a little bit of background on this project because it's been about a three-month process to get it to this point and my goal was to replicate the power and performance of the citizen bike build and do it in a more appropriate way. And when I say that, I mean the citizen bike is a Frankenstein, right? It's got pieces and parts cobbled together from all over the place and it's done with connectors and splicing and my horrible soldering and controllers are shunt modded and motors are over volted. And I didn't want to do any of that on this build. I wanted to make it a cleaner build something that could be the, uh, like very easily replicated. And that's the point we've gotten to right now. I utilized my industry contacts to get linked up with the manufacturer and used my knowledge from building the citizen bike on what exactly I would need, gave you know, my wish list to the manufacturer and said, can you build this for me? And they were able to get me motors, controllers, displays, everything that works together in unison, wiring harnesses, it all matches up, all the plugs match, there's no splicing or soldering or connectors or anything like that. It's all plug and play. And I tested out different batteries, different controllers to get this, get it performing at its best. And this is the recipe. So this is where my question to you now comes in. How many of you would want to try to do something similar because I've got the recipe now. I know the mixture of parts. I've got controllers, displays, motors, wiring harnesses. Everything is plug and play. I can put this together into a one-stop kit where you would get a box with every single thing you need to build exactly this. And when I say everything, I mean the motor already laced into a rim, the controller, the display, throttle, wiring harness, battery, brake cutoffs, every single piece you need to convert to all-wheel drive would be in that one box. So I can have like, kits made like that, all-wheel drive conversion kits, if there was enough interest for it. But it wouldn't be cheap. I mean, I'd probably have to sell those things for like $800-ish. That's a lot of stuff. But the, the thing is though, when I built the Citizen bike and I piecemealed it together from buying parts all over the place, it cost me $1,200 to build the Citizen bike in its current version. $1,200 buying parts and grafting them all together. So by you know, doing it this way, if people wanted them, I could make kits. It would save quite a bit of money if you wanted to do this. But I don't know how much interest is out there for it. So comment below and let me, let me know what you think, if you'd be interested in that. But now I wanna show you the bike up close. I wanna show you how it's wired, how it functions, and tell you what components are on it. Let's take a look. All right, so let me show you how this all-wheel drive bike is built. First thing I'll tell you is I did not touch any of the Wired Freedom's stock components. The front motor is just its own completely separate system that's grafted onto the front of this bike. So let's start here at the front. First thing is your 750 watt geared hub motor. And I got this motor already laced into this rim. Here's the stock Wired Freedom rim. So all you gotta do when you get this motor and rim is you take off your tube and tire and your disc brake off of the original. You put it onto the new rim and then you drop it down on the dropouts, put on your uh, torque washers, axle nuts, and you're done. You've got yourself a front motor, which was a huge, huge time saver for me. That was one of the hardest parts of the Citizen bike was getting a motor into a wheel. I had to go out, I bought a motor on Amazon for $300 and then I took it to a bike shop and had a wheel builder lace it into a wheel for me, cost $214 to do that. So I spent over $500 getting just the wheel into a motor on my Citizen bike. So this was an awesome, easy way to do it. Just literally change the tube and tire and disc over and boom, drop it in the dropouts, you're done. You got your 750 watt geared hub motor in there and it's a 52 volt 750. And then coming up the forks here, you can see you got your motor wire, I just got it zip tied onto the forks, crosses over right there and goes down the back side of the frame. Well, let's move to the back. Next area where things are going on. I've got my controller mounted right here to the back of the rear rack. I did that because it's really out of the way. It's pretty hidden under there. I just have it Velcro strapped onto the rack. I've been taking this kit kind of off and on this bike a lot, so I didn't want to mount it permanently. It's just on there with Velcro straps right now. It's a 40 five 
amp controller, 45 amp controller running that motor. So it's got a lot of power. And the other reason I want to put it here is to show that there's enough wiring to get all the way to the front of the bike. So the motor cable and also the wiring harness that goes up to the displays is eight feet long. So you've got a ton of wire to get all the way from the front of the bike to the back of the bike if you need to. And there's actually slack of wire left over that I've got tied up under the rear rack there. You can see I don't have this orange plug plugged in. That's for a tail light. So if I wanted to add a second tail light, I could put that on. There's one other orange connector in there not plugged in and that's for pedal assist. I did not connect the front motor to pedal assist and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But that's where I got the 45 amp controller hiding and then in the rear pack is where I hide the batteries. All right, so this one I got running off this 52 volt 10 amp hour battery pack. And you know, coming out of the controller, there's a battery wire with an XT60 on it. I just poked a little hole in the bag, shoved the wire through, the battery has an XT60. You just plug them in and you're good to go. You've got your battery connected. Now, if I were to build a kit, I would probably build with a battery like this, which is a 52 volt, 15 amp hour. So a little bit bigger capacity. It's just kind of wider and flatter than that one that's in there right now. So this would probably be the battery that I would include, give you a, a lot of capacity. It's like 780 watt hours and it still fits in the rear pack. It's only like six inches wide. So it'd still fit in there nicely but that would probably be the battery. You can see you just got one charging plug that comes off and then your XT60 that plugs directly into the controller. So there's no cutting, no splicing, nothing. Everything's plug and play. And I'm gonna spin this bike around a little bit to show you the other side. All right, there we go, that's better. And I undid these straps so I can lift the bag up and you can see here's your controller hiding right there in the rear rack. All the extra wires just tied up right there. So it kind of keeps it clean out of the way, hiding under the rear pack, battery inside. The only thing that's coming out of there now are these two wires right here. So one of them is your motor wire and the other one is the wiring harness that goes up to your displays. So you got these two wires coming out right here. I got them coming down, zip tied right here to the seat post, zip tied right here to the suspension mount, and then they go up the underside of the battery right there. And I just have them basically black taped to kind of hide them. They don't really stand out too much. And then right here goes right up here to your display, to your wiring harness wire, and then the motor wire crosses over and goes down the fork on that side. So that's really the only wiring that shows. You can really only kind of see it from right here to right here. And that's all you really see. You do have enough slack where you could go like underneath here, but the way the suspension compresses, I felt like it was tugging on these wires doing it that way. So I routed it up this direction. I think it functions a little better like that. All right, so now let's show you the cockpit and I'll explain how this bike functions. So we got our, our front motor turned on right now. Front motor display, front motor button cluster, front motor throttle right here. So anytime you want the front wheel to go, all you gotta do is push, push that button right there. This is your rear display, all the original wired Freedom stuff. So you can turn that one on too. And they're matching displays. So it's kind of nice that they look similar. And button cluster for rear wheel throttle for rear wheel. So when you want rear, twist. When you want front, push this. And when you want both, you do both. And I mentioned I don't have the front wheel connected to pedal assist. And that's because I find it really dangerous. I don't want the front wheel to spin out from under me unexpectedly. So if I'm doing a low speed turn and I accidentally turn the pedals and that front wheel kicks in and starts spinning and, and wrecks me, I don't want that. So the only time I ever want that front wheel to go is when I tell it to by pushing the throttle. So that's why I don't connect the pedal assist. And that's the same reason that I don't link the throttles as well. Everybody says always link the throttles, put you know, one throttle connected to both wheels. Again, no, I don't, I don't want that front wheel going unexpectedly. I don't wanna have to deal with a switch flipping off and on, forgetting that I have the front motor on. I like it on its completely own separate throttle. That way I only ever get front wheel when I push this lever right here. So the throttles aren't linked. You might be saying, okay, well, why don't you link the displays and only have one display? Well, having two displays like this allows me to monitor the two separate systems. The wired is a 60 volt battery. This is a 52 volt battery running the front. So I can see my individual battery capacities, you know, what each one's running at. I can also set up 
I can program things differently. If I want the front wheel to be programmed for a slow start so I don't get so much wheel spin, by having it on a separate display, I can program it separately. So that's why I don't combine displays. Now you could combine batteries if you wanted to and run both wheels off of one battery. The reason I didn't do that is because I just want it functioning as its own separate system, not touching the bike's original wiring harness. So I haven't done anything to alter the stock Wired Freedoms components or wiring. I haven't touched any of that. It's its own separate system that I can remove or add onto the bike whenever I want. Now I've also got the front motor set up where it has brake cutoffs. So that would be part of the kit as well. You'd get magnetic brake cutoffs, these things right here. You attach them right onto the base of the brake. And then there's another little magnet that gets attached with double stick tape onto the lever. So you have now motor cutoffs. You have the original wired ones that are already wired coming out right there. These are the auxiliary ones for the second motor. So now both motors have a brake cutoff. And I'll show you on the screen here. When I pull the front brake, you'll see the little brake indicator flash right here. See that come on? Showing that the front motor's cut off and the rear motor cut off too. Anytime you pull either brake, you can see the motors are disengaged. Switch over to this one because of those extra brake cutoffs. So pulling either brake cuts both motors. Safety thing, right? You don't want, again, want that motor going unexpectedly. So got brake, uh, cutoff, you know, magnetic ones, extra ones included in the kit as well if we, if we do this. So there you go, there's how she set up. 52 volt battery pack, 45 amp controller, 52 volt 750 geared hub motor in the front and it's a powerhouse. Let me show you a couple quick clips. All right, let's show you a couple quick tests here. First one we're gonna do is the hill climb test. That's what this baby is built for. All wheel drive helps so much on the hills. It just gives you great hill climb power. I'm gonna do this hill twice. The first time I'm gonna do the front motor only. Just this front motor citizen kit. How strong is it just on its own? And remember a typical 750 bike will climb this in about 22 to 25 seconds. So let's see how fast this motor is just by itself. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Jeez, that was a lot of wheel spin. Climbing nicely though. Up to 14 miles an hour. 15, 16. Go and time. So there you go. That's compared to a typical 750 motor. That's how much power this kit motor has. Now, we're gonna go down. I'm gonna do it again with both motors. So you get the full effect of just how fast this thing is. All right, time for both motors. I gotta hang on. This is gonna be a wild ride up this hill. So, to put this into perspective, a uh, the Wired Freedom on its own, we'll do this in about 15 seconds. Citizen Bike does it in just over 11 seconds. So, let's see what she's got. We might be able to beat Citizen. Let's see. Three, two, one, go. Wow, great takeoff. A lot of wheel spin though. Concentrate through the curves. And time. Holy cow. Wow. Wow, this thing's crazy. All right, so we know it does a lot for the hill climb. Let me show you what it does for acceleration. This is gonna be uh, the Wired Freedom motor only. We're gonna do a quick zero to like 30. Let's see, let's see what it takes. Three, two, one, go. There you go. Wired's stock zero to 30 time, which is pretty respectable. This is a very powerful bike. And that's uh, that's faster than most e-bikes out there. But let's spin around and add in this front motor now. All right, here we go, both the motors. This isn't gonna take long. Three, two, one, go. Wow. 30, whoa. That was pretty quick. Pretty darn quick. Citizen Bike does it, I think, like 4.6, 4.8, somewhere in there. 
right, now there's one more thing I want to try, which is this big hill right here. It's like 35 miles an hour. I'm going to start with the wired motor only and then part way up the hill, I'll hit the front motor kit. We'll see how much it adds in. All right, here we go. Wired motor only right now. We're going 28 miles an hour. Hit 30. Now we start into the hard part of the hill. It's decreasing. Let's hit the front motor. We dropped down to 25, but now we're accelerating back up the hill. Back up to 30 on the steep part of the hill. So it just pulled us right out of that decline and then right up to speed. It makes a big difference. All right, let's get out on this road here and power a boost. You can hear it just roaring. Top speed's about the same. I mean, 38, 39 here on level ground. No, no speed gain. But the acceleration power is phenomenal crazy amount of power. Spin around, get right back up to speed. You hear it digging in. Into the wind, 33, no problem. 35, 36. All right, we'll do a little 16 mile an hour roll on throttles. The kick is just crazy. So crazy. Spin around, hit the gas. <laughs> Just craziness. Alright, so new king of the garage? I don't know, we have to find somebody that can ride the citizen bike with me head to head to truly see, but right now, the performance numbers for a hill climb and acceleration, all that, the numbers it's throwing up are the same or better than the citizen bike. And it's doing it on knobby tires. The citizen bike runs street slicks. So I gotta believe it's a little bit faster than the citizen bike. And now you may be wondering, okay, well, you did it to the wired bike. Can I, would I be able to add this kit or put this motor onto other bikes. And let me stop you right there because there's one key to this thing and that's right here. The RST guide forks, gotta have those. Whatever bike you would put this motor on, it's gotta have those forks. Any other fork I've ever tried with a geared hub motor, the forks have broken instantly. They can't handle that torque. The guide forks seem to be able to handle it or if you had steel dropouts, that would be ideal. But that's all you'd be really to put, able to put it on. So if your bike has RST guide forks, yeah, and it's a fat tire, yeah, it would probably work. Otherwise, no, I wouldn't do it. You'll, it'll just break the forks and you'll go nowhere. So, <laughs> but that is, that's the build. I'm really curious to see if there's demand for it. I've had so many people over the years asking me about building the Citizen Bike. Where's the parts list? I want to do it too. So I got to believe that there's the demand for something like this, but pass the word around, the group chats, and if you or somebody you know is interested in something like this, drop it in the comments and say, yeah, I'm willing to part with that much cash to buy one. Again, it'd probably be like 800 bucks or so for you know battery included. I could probably do one kit with a battery and one without, in case you already have a battery, but put it in the comments and say yes, and if there's a big enough demand, I'll get them built. I'll get them built, I'll get them sent over here. It would probably take you know 30 days to build them and another 30 to 45 to get them across the Pacific and through customs and everything. So it'll be a probably a two month lead time on them. But let me know and I uh, hope you enjoyed the latest creation. Uh, if so, consider hitting subscribe, come back for more. Talk to you again soon. Thanks.